okay now let us look at uh, how to solve a second order non homogeneous differential equation with variable coefficients say given by let us say some p of x a to b squared y by b x squared plus b of x a to b y by b x plus c of x times y equal to b of x. So this is a non-homogeneous function. So one can always transform uh, an equation of this type by multiplying it uh, with a factor one by P of x into exponential integration up to x some b of xi by a of xi d xi. So if you were to multiply uh, with this factor the above equation we can easily see that uh, the first term will have this exponential factor. Okay, let me just call it as some g. Right, so 1 by a of x and a of x will be some g times d squared y by dx squared. And then here we get uh, b of x by a of x times this uh, exponential factor g a to d by dx plus uh, c of x by a of x times g times y equal to 1 by a of x times g times d of x. Okay, now what we can see is like uh, sort of uh, in these two, if we were to take common. I can write this as d by dx of g times divided dx. So what you can see is in one case you will have g and then d square by dx square which is the first term here and in the other case you will have d by dx of g into d by dx. So d by dx of g is nothing but uh, you see d by, d by d g by dx if you see here is nothing but basically it's basically exponential some other function of h of x. So it will give back again exponential h of x which is nothing but g and into d h of x by d x d h of x by d x so and h of x is an integral so when you take the integral and the differentiation so you get back the b of x by a of x so that's why it's the same term here so this c of x by a of x can be replaced by another function minus s of x y equal to and this function here is typically written as f of x and this function g is generally written as some p of x. So basically what we will have is um, d by dx of p of x dy by dx minus s of x times y equal to f of x. So what we have done is we transformed this second order non-homogeneous differential equation with variable coefficients a of x, b of x and c of x into an equation of this form which is called as a Sturm-Lebesgue equation. And this particular uh, operator 
is called this terminal of the operator. So L is nothing but d by dx of p of x dy by dx uh, y one cap p of x d by dy minus s of x. This is called the terminal of the operator. So this equation is generally written as L acting on y equal to f of x. That is operator. And if we were to choose s of x to be some s naught of x minus lambda times r naught of x, then it typically gives you an eigenvalue problem. Right? In that case, uh, uh, so you can see here we will be substituting minus s naught of x plus lambda times r naught of x equal to f of x. So that's a kind of a uh, problem which we generally come across in physics. Okay, so this is the kind of equation that we would like to solve. That is, or we can say this one: L of y, where L is this operator, sum of the operator, equal to f of x. This is non-homogeneous differential equation. Okay, so how do we wish to solve this? So we want to use the Green's function approach. Green's function approach. So what does the Green's function approach tell us now? So the Green's function approach tells us that um, first and foremost the Green's function g of x xi satisfies d by dx of p of x d g of x times y dx minus s of x g of x times y is the solution when f of x is delta of x minus y. Right? This is the first point that we should know. That is what is the Green's function? Green's function is the solution of the non-homogeneous differential equation when the non-homogeneous part of the function is replaced by delta function. Okay. Second thing that we have to understand is that the Green's function has to satisfy certain homogeneous boundary conditions. G of x comma y must satisfy homogeneous boundary conditions uh, within the interval. Let us say the interval is a comma b. So that is something like uh, you know uh, we can uh, generalize these uh, boundary conditions as you know, g of x comma xi should uh, basically let us first write down um, important thing is for some value of x equal to xi for x less than xi and x greater than xi that is for any value of x x not equal to xi the Green's function satisfies the homogeneous equation that is L of g of x comma xi is equal to 0 for x not equal to z. That's one thing. And then the fourth thing that we know is g of x comma z is continuous. Is continuous at x equal to z. And the fifth thing that we know is g of x comma z has jump discontinuity at x equal to z. How do we uh, g dash g dash dg by d. How do we determine this? So what we have to do is we have to integrate this e this equation. Okay, let's call this equation to from uh, xi minus epsilon to xi plus epsilon and take limit epsilon to to zero. So let's do that. So if you take limit epsilon tending to 0 integration of uh, d by dx of that whole thing will give you p of x into g dash of x comma y between xi minus epsilon to xi plus epsilon g of x comma z is continuous s of x is a continuous function so that goes to basically 0 that integral from xi minus epsilon to 
Sekretärin von Sochiwan, als auch als Sekretärin der Jiok, ist dann der Dugong. Und der Gazeera ist in der Cape Talk. Und uh, on the other side, we'll have equal to integration of delta of x minus xi between xi minus epsilon xi plus epsilon gives you 1. Okay, so substituting here p of xi plus epsilon and g dash of xi plus epsilon xi minus p of xi minus epsilon into g dash of xi minus epsilon xi equal to 1 from the limit epsilon tending to 0. Okay. So basically when you set epsilon tending to 0, p of xi is a continuous function so we can take it to the other side. So what we are left with is g dash of xi plus 1 is right minus g dash of xi minus 1 is right should be equal to 1 by p of xi. So what is the uh, magnitude of the discontinuity? It is 1 by p of xi. Okay. So these are the various points you have to keep in mind when you are trying to solve this particular equation that we are interested in. That is this L of y equal to f of x. Okay. How is this equation all about? Okay. So now let us try to solve this. Okay. So now let us uh, say that. Uh, so let us look for the solution in terms of this function. Um, let us say for a less than. Okay. Uh, what are the homogeneous boundary conditions? Uh, that we did not write. So uh, in the interval a and b. So because this uh, g satisfies the g of x comma xi satisfies the homogeneous boundary conditions a comma b and basically g of x comma xi is the solution of the homogeneous equation. So if you consider the two regions, let us say if you have a less than or equal to x less than or equal to xi, then g should satisfy the condition alpha 1 times g of, uh, I should say x equal to a here, so g of a comma xi plus some alpha 2 times g dash of a comma xi equal to 0. So this is one homogeneous boundary condition. And similarly at the other end, that is for the region xi less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. So at the other interval, at the other end, we should have g2 satisfying, let's say some beta 1 g of b comma xi plus beta 2 g dash of b comma xi to be equal to 0. So this is what is expected of the Green's function. Okay. So now let us uh, start with our solution. For the region a less than equal to x less than equal to xi, we assume that we have, we assume we have non-trivial solution for the homogeneous equation. Let us assume that non trivial solution to be some y1 of x. Okay. So y1 of x should satisfy the boundary condition at A, which is similar to G. So alpha 1, y1 of A plus alpha 2, y1 dash of A equal to 0. But this is a similar kind of condition. This also should satisfy. So, if these two equations have to be simultaneously satisfied, then because alpha 1 and alpha 2 are not 0, both alpha 1 and alpha 2, any, at least both alpha 1 and alpha 2 are not 0 here, and similarly both beta 1 and beta 2 are not 0 here. Okay. And uh, therefore, that means, um, you know, the Ronskian of uh, G and Y1 should be 0 of g and y1 should be equal to 0. What does it mean? It means that your g of x comma xi in this region has to be some constant. It should be linearly dependent on y times y1 of x. Okay. 
So this is g of x comma psi in region one. Okay, this is the let's say region one. Okay. So similarly, if we consider region two, z less than equal to x less than equal to b, let us assume y two of x is a non-trivial solution. In that case, we can show that g of x comma z in this region will be equal to c two times y two of x. Okay, that is the Green's function for this region. So now we need to determine c one and c two. So to determine c one and c two, we have two conditions. One is g of x comma z is continuous at x equal to z. So at x equal to z. We have g of x comma z in region one, that is c one y one of z, which should be equal to c two times y two of z. That is this one. This Green's function should be equal on both sides. They both are continuous. So this gives us one equation, which is c one y one of z minus c two y two of z equal to zero. Okay, now. Similarly, at x equal to z, we have dumped discontinuity for g dash. That is, g dash of z plus comma z minus g dash of z minus comma z is equal to one by c of z. Second region. So you should have here c two y two dash of z minus, and this will give us. G dash of z minus so this will be c one y one dash of z equal to one by c of z. So this can be rewritten in this fashion. You can write it as c one y one dash of z minus c two y two dash of z equal to minus one upon c of z. So let's call this equation as three. And let's call this equation as four. So we can solve three and four for obtaining c one and c two. So, for example, C one will be zero uh, minus one upon P of z, and here we have uh, for C two minus y two of z, and here we have minus y two dash of z divided by we have y one of z, y two minus y two of z. Y one dash of z minus y two dash of z. So this will give us zero into zero is going to go. This is plus into plus into zero over all a minus. So minus p of z, uh, not p of z, minus y two of z divided by p of z divided by. This is nothing but the uh, with a minus sign. If you take out common, this gives nothing but round scheme of. Y one of z comma y two of z. So similarly, we get c two to be equal to. So uh, basically, this has come out to be y two of z divided by p of z into a round scheme, and c two will similarly come out to be y one of z divided by P of z times round scheme. So we got both c one and c two. Therefore, g of x comma z will be equal to it is c one times. So c one here is y two of z times divided by p of z into the round scheme times y one of x. So this is for a less than equal to x less than equal to z, and it will be equal to. C two, C two is y one of z divided by p of z into round square times y two of x. This is for z less than equal to x. So this is the most general solution for the Green's function. Sorry, uh, for the non-homogeneous uh, or the stumbler B equation, and then one can always obtain the solution. In terms of the Green's function, as y of x will be equal to integral a to b g of 
x comma z f of z dz. So of course one should be careful when you are trying to integrate this there are two regions. So we have to integrate it from a integral a to x the first part of the Green's function f of z dz and then integral x to b the second part of the function uh, Green's function dz into f of z dz. So this is then you can easily show by substituting this uh, you know by differentiating y uh, with respect to x and then calculating again once again d squared over dx squared one can substitute and back and see that this is exactly the solution which satisfies the Stamler equation. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you.